Hello, everyone. This is Wes Henson, and welcome to this week's On The Go podcast. And on this podcast, we review and summarize the Bible Studies for Life series weekly lesson. Please take a few moments and look in the show notes and the description for links to a two-page printed summary and also a bonus handout. I want to thank you for joining me today for this week's small group Bible study for the week of May the 26th, 2024. Now, if you're new here, please do me a favor. Hit the subscribe button, hit the thumbs up button, and ring the bell, and then that way you won't miss another episode of our on-the-go Bible study. Okay, let's begin with this week's study. Today's lesson focuses on a special event. And the special focus is titled, The Joy of Giving. Now, is that true? Uh, is giving joyful? Do we really mean it? Is there such a thing as joyful giving? Well, our culture appreciates charitable giving. In fact, 60% of American households engage in some form of charitable giving. That's applaudable, but Americans only give between 3 and 5% of their income. Now, those in the church surely do far better, right? Well, unfortunately, the average church attendee only gives about 2.5% to their church. Now, the Bible not only calls believers to give, but they are called to give with great generosity. So, to put it mildly, generosity is a stretch for many of us. It doesn't flow naturally from our souls, even for believers. Though giving is a delicate subject, God's Word puts a great deal of importance on giving. We're going to take a look today at a powerful passage of Scripture that has some practical insights on how we can grow in our generosity. And the point of our lesson today is to give generously and trust God with the outcome. Our study passage today is in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, and we'll be looking at verses 6 through 15. So if you have your Bible, get a hold of it, take a look, take it down. Let's open up to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, and we're going to begin in verse 16 in just a moment. But let me give you a little background on Paul's letter here. So Paul writes this letter, 2 Corinthians, from Macedonia or, or Ephesus. And he writes to the church in Corinth, and he does this between, oh, 55 to 57 A.D. And the letter that he writes addresses some of the problems that, are, that the church at Corinth is going through. And one of the problems, or one of the issues that Paul addresses is what we're going to find here. He is urging them to complete a collection, an offering, for the church in Jerusalem, which is, which is poverty-stricken. And the church in Corinth, they had to had agreed to assist in such an offering. Yeah, we'll, we'll gather up, we'll collect. Uh, however, they were slackers when it came to fulfilling the commitment that they had made. So Paul is addressing that issue here in these verses. All right, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, let's pick up in verse 6. Paul writes, he says, the point is this. The person who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the person who sows generously will also reap generously. Each person should do as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or out of compulsion, since God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make every grace overflow to you, so that in every way, always having everything you need, you may excel in every good work. As it is written, he distributed freely, he gave to the poor, and his righteousness endures forever. So we see here in these verses that generous giving is marked by two traits. Number one, it's voluntary. Uh, New Testament giving is marked by both freedom and intentionality. Paul says each person should do voluntarily as he has decided in his heart with intention. Giving is pure, purely voluntary, but Paul encouraged the Corinthians to also discipline themselves. In 1 Corinthians, the first letter, chapter 16, verse 2, Paul says to them that they are to set something aside uh, and in a planned, systematic, 
uh, way of giving. It's voluntary, but make plans for it. And then, then uh, also, giving is to be done uh, not reluctantly or out of compulsion. So first of all, it's voluntary, and secondly, it's not to be done reluctantly or out of compulsion. Uh, reluctantly means to give with sorrow or grief. Giving isn't to be done with an attitude of mourning over what you are parting with. Uh, instead, joy should fill our hearts as we give. Again, Paul here says, God loves a cheerful giver. Now, it's hard to explain that when we commit to generosity, God will take good care of us. Hard to say that. Uh, God at times uh, may give believers the things they desire. As we give, we may receive that which we desire. But Paul didn't have these blessings in view here. That's not what he's saying. The goal of these divine supplies is not primarily the believer's wealth or personal pleasure. Uh, God provides for believers so that they, as he says here, may excel in every good work. Not so that we can uh, give, so that we can, can, can get something else in return, but so that we can excel in every good work. And what it, he likely means here is that believers would be free from worry over necessities and focus on fulfilling the commands of God. In other words, as we give, as God leads, as we determine in our hearts, uh, we will still, the Lord will provide for those things that we still need to carry on. So some lessons here from these verses include this. God gives his rich blessing to those who give generously. That's what Paul's saying here. Uh, secondly, God is pleased by those who give thoughtfully and freely. And cheerfully. God loves a cheerful giver. Thought number three, God is more than able to give us what we need. God is not held back. And then the, the last point here is that God gives us the resources to do his good work. If God calls us to give, he's going to provide the resources so that we are able to give and also to fulfill the necessities that we have in life. Okay, God gives freely to us and God loves a cheerful giver in these next verses we're going to see that God multiplies our gifts verse 10 verses 10 and 11 now the one who provides seed for the sower and bread for food will also provide and multiply your seed and increase the harvest of your righteousness you will be enriched in every way for all generosity which produces thanksgiving to God through us. So in verse 10 here, uh, Paul seems to be pointing to verses in the Old Testament. Isaiah 55, 10, Hosea chapter 10, verse 12. And these verses point out the twin concepts of finances from the Bible. Twin ideas, truths, when it comes to the resources that we have, comes from Scripture. Number one, God owns it all. God's ownership of all things. Everything in the world belongs to the Lord. And number two, the believer's stewardship of what God entrusts to us. So what you have and what I have all belongs to the Lord, and he has blessed us with it, and we are to be good stewards, uh, managers of what God has provided. Now, oftentimes people uh, attribute their prosperity to their own creativity, their work ethic, uh, their knowledge, their ingenuity, but a biblical worldview attributes all success and all provision to God. Nothing we have, nothing we do could be accomplished or taken care of without the Lord. So um, there's a, uh, um, a link in the notes here uh, to a handout, a special handout, and I encourage you to, to look for it in the show notes. Uh, it's entitled uh, "Tithing" and uh, what that means, what that means, and how the Scripture deals with that. God's Word calls for disciplined giving, for the giving of our tithes and our offerings. And then in verse 11, notice what Paul says. He says, "You will be enriched in every way for all generosity." Those. There are those who promote the prosperity gospel, right? Name it and claim it. 
and they would say that being enriched in every way would include financial blessings that the more you give oftentimes to them uh, the more that the Lord is going to give to you well you know any financial blessing is a gift from God but this verse verse 11 is not a guarantee of financial success for believers and if we're giving with the idea that we're going to give five dollars and God is going to give us back ten dollars we miss the point instead the verse tells us that the more one gives to others the more they are enriched uh, to be generous to others in other words the more that we are willing to give the more the Lord gives to us so that we can give even more and verse 11 here ends with a connection between giving and gratitude. Paul says that, that generosity produces thanksgiving to God through us. Simply put, God receives the glory when believe, as believers when we share. Um, people say, thank the Lord for the gift that you have given. So from these two verses, we can learn that God's plan includes his provision of resources to us so that we may in turn use them to assist others in need. And then secondly, faithfulness and generosity in giving leads to thanksgiving and praise to God. So in these next verses, our last verses, verses 12 through 15, we see that God is glorified when we're generous. Let me read this. For the ministry of this service is not only supplying the needs of the saints, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Because of the proof provided by this ministry, they will glorify God for your obedient confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone. Verse 14, And as they pray on your behalf, they will have deep affection for you because of the surpassing grace of God in you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift ministry of service paul talks here this this the ministry of this service so ministry of service originally referred to someone anyone any uh, uh, person in the community who did a public service at their own expense it was a ministry of service they were serving the community at their own cost the implication is that generosity comes at the personal expense of the individual but two great things result. In other words, when we give, we give and we have less in our bank account because we're giving. But there's this benefit. A benefit of generosity uh, is that God uses us to supply the needs of the saints. In other words, we give depletes our bank account. But by doing that, the benefit is that someone, another believer, uh, has their needs met. Our ministry of service and generosity also overflows, Paul says, in many expressions of thanks to God. Now, one, one of the meanings here is that these verses, of these verses, is that the needy in Jerusalem, and because they were taking up this offering, and all believers in Palestine were thanking God for the concern and the help of these Gentile churches from around the Roman Empire. Needs are met, and people recognize the hand of God that's at work. So it may be me giving my offering to the church and providing uh, a need for another believer. Uh, as I provide that need, people say, well, we thank the Lord, and we, we kind of like represent the Lord uh, in being able to share the resources that God has given us. That We're allowing God to flow those resources through us and through the need that, that surrounds us. So what we learn from these last verses is this. Number one, faithful service can lead others to express gratitude and praise to God. As we give, they can thank the Lord. Number two, serving others in Jesus' name is an expression of worship. Number three, even if separated by distance or circumstances, as the church in Corinth was separated from the need that was in Jerusalem, uh, believers can feel warmly toward one another when they pray, and they were able to pray for those who are in need. Our giving, the last point here is our giving pales in the significance 
to the greatest gift of all, and that is God's gift of grace that is manifested in Jesus Christ. So we may think that we're giving up a lot of our income or a lot of our assets as we provide for the needs of others. However, God gave up a far greater, uh, gave us a far greater gift when he gave us eternal life. Okay, that's our lesson for this week. So let's let's put it into practice. Let's let's think of some applications. I'm going to share three with you uh, today. Number one is thank. Uh, make one day this week a gratitude-focused day. What I mean by that is from the moment you get up in the morning, all day, set an alarm to pause so that you'll pause at the top of every hour and spend an entire minute, one minute of every hour of, of one day, uh, uh, spend that time in gratitude. Gratitude is the perfect soil in which to nurture a heart of generosity. As we are thankful for what God has given to us, we can't help but to be generous to others. Application number two is give. Support the ministry and missions of your church through a regular faithful giving. If you give to support other Christian-centered ministries, that's great. Um, you know, we don't always have to give everything through the church, but let the first place of giving and uh, be through your local church family. And then application number three is increase. Set a goal of increasing your financial support uh, to your local church. If you're already a tither, already giving 10% of your income, well, maybe you could pray about how you could increase that percentage and maybe give a little bit more. Folks, the more that you give, the more that you desire to give. And you may, you know, to do that, you may have to take a hard look at some adjustments that you need to make in your own personal budget uh, to make this a, ra a reality. But, to, but trust God with your generosity. Lord, I want to be more generous. I don't, I'm not talking about not putting food on your table or, you know, anything like that, but, you know, how can I be more generous in, in, in the Lord's work? That's a good, um, a good thought to think about. Okay. Let's wrap everything up for this week. The point of our lesson is give generously and trust God for the outcome. And part of our call as we follow Christ is to wisely steward our money. And as true as that responsibility is, it can feel like an added stress, right? I mean, how can I do that? And we worry about it. But when the Lord invites us to be generous, it's not to take from us, but instead to bless us with deep joy. Okay, remember to check out all of the links for this week's study. They're in the show notes there. Look those up, and I will see you next time. Bye for now.